Hello everyone, welcome to Horse Drive again to part one, and we're gonna start out with the incredibly awesome Unreal horror theme shooter called Beast Busters. We are running this via MAME 2010. It has input issues on MAME 2003, so I'd highly recommend doing it on MAME 2010 instead. And I'm a big, big fan of Unreal shooters in general, from the classics such as Operation Wolf, up to the great games on Sega Saturn, such as Panzer Dragoon and Panzer Dragoon Sega. And of course I play my Wii on a normal basis, simply for the House of the Dead games on the system. And I love my Dreamcast for games such as Typing of the Dead and the House of the Dead and such. And hopefully we'll be able to get some of these going on the mini, but right now Dreamcast does not currently run, but hopefully we'll get it going. And the Horror Strive Against the series is not just going to be horror themed games. It will include some horrifying experiences I've had with video games as well as ultra violent video games. But uh, grab a second or third controller and definitely check this incredibly awesome game called Beast Busters in two or three player mode on May 2010. But we're going to move on to some more games here. We're going to play another great on rails shooter called Alien 3 The Gun. Which, by the way, is a System 32 game, and I would only recommend running this on MAME 2003 Extreme for my core set. If you try running it on MAME 2010 or MAME 2014, you're going to end up having choppy graphics and a horrible frame rate. And uh, also, I'd like to mention Carnival, which is by far my favorite horror theme game of all. Does not run well on the mini whatsoever, so don't even attempt it. You're going to be lucky to get three to four frames per second. Pretty bad. But right now we're playing Alien 3 to Gun. Great, great game. And again, I am running it via MAME 2003 Extreme. And I'm also going to use a mouse on this game. And I just uh, mentioned in one of my last videos that I watched Alien Covenant for the first time. And there were mixed reviews about how stupid the characters were in the movie. I mean, what horror movie have you seen where you truly have smart characters? I mean, it, it, it's fun just watching the outcome of their dire consequences and such. And I'm a big horror fan. I mean, as far as movie genres are concerned... Horror movies are my favorite genre of all. Ever since a very, very early age, watching the original Friday the 13th, Two Nightmare on Elm Street, and so on, I've always been a big fan of horror movies, first and foremost. Ironically, horror-themed video games are not my favorite genre. I much prefer watching movies to playing horror-themed video games, but there are some incredible horror-themed games nonetheless. But let's check this out. <coughs> And even though many, many people would say Resident Evil is their favorite horror game, I'm actually a big, big fan of Evil Within on PS4. I really, really love that game, and I like what they did with it. But I do love the Resident Evils as well, and I own each and every one of those. And I'll get on to uh, Resident Evil throughout the course of this video and the rest of the series as well. But this is running quite nicely on main 2003 stream using a mouse. Really awesome here. If you are running an OTG device, by the way, and you ever have issues where you have your USB flash drive and a mouse and a keyboard plugged in, and you power on the system and you end up getting the default games, just have only the USB flash drive plugged in, and then after you power the system on and get to the user interface, then plug in your mouse and your keyboard or any other peripheral such as controllers and stuff. You'll find that 9 out of 10 times, it'll boot up properly after that point. Really, really fun game. I'm a big fan of all the Alien games. <laughs> yes, unlike Superman 64, the Alien games have quite a few exceptional games in the legacy. And my game's over, so we're going to move on to some more games. So we got two winners so far. We got Beastbusters on MAME 2010 and Alien 3 The Gun on MAME 2003 Extreme. Let's see what other great games we have to check out here. We'll stick with the theme of horror theme shooters, and we'll check out another uh, one here. But this is more of a, a static screen, but still a really, really cool game. It's called Chiller, and there is actually an NES version of this as well. But the arcade version plays quite well with a mouse, and I would highly recommend running it with a mouse if at all possible to, because the sensitivity is more endearing than trying to do it with a controller and having it finicky and jump all over the place. You can even play Duck Hunt on Main 2003 Stream, albeit with glitchy sound. The graphics and gameplay fine, but the sound is really, really glitched. I'll have to showcase that in another video, but I don't consider that a horror-themed game, so it's not going to be in the context 
of this video. But I did do it in one of my NES Classic videos last year. But we're going to do this one with the mouse as well. And it actually plays decently with the controller, but I love the finesse of the controller much better. So we're going to stick with the mouse here. Some games like Alien 3 to the Gun are a little bit more sensitive, so they're harder to control with a controller. But you can actually go into the input this game and analog controllers and adjust them accordingly and get a little mm -hmm. more fine-tuned mm -hmm. sensitivity if you so choose to. But if you could use the mouse, even better. And for, unfortunately, it's harder to use a light gun because they typically would use CRT screens, which we mostly do not have nowadays. <laughs> Okay, let's check this out for a moment here. And I'm also in my future performance upgrades. I'm going to work on having the Aerosmith and the Terminator games pretty much auto-configured so you can just start them with a controller and play them right off the bat. So I'm going to try to get those within the next two or few upgrades or so. See, so much better with the mouse here. Like, you can literally shoot about anything on a screen. It's pretty horrific. Imagine if this was a packing game for the original Nintendo instead of Duck on how would that have been? Pretty, pretty interesting game here. But this is Chiller. It's also on Nintendo. Very, very interesting game. And we're going to stick with the Alien Legacy here. I'm going to play this incredibly awesome side-scrolling game called Aliens vs. Predator, which you will likely never see on your Xbox 360 or your PS3 or your PS4 or your Xbox One. I mean, even if you get lucked out and see it on the Switch, it's going to be incredibly lucky due to the just the sheer amount of licensing going on with Aliens and Predators to begin with. But here we go, Aliens vs. Predator. Now I've seen all the Aliens movies, all the Predator movies. I'm looking forward to the next Predator movie, of course. And ironically, I saw the last uh, Predators movie in the theater. And then I went to Cedar Point in Sandusky, Ohio. And the lead actor of that movie happened to be at Cedar Point at the time, literally looking like he came right off the movie set. And I was thoroughly surprised. A lot of people didn't recognize him because they didn't have the longer hair that he had in the That 70s Show series. But, um... He looked more like he did in the Predators movie as well as the playing Venom within the Spider-Man 3 movie. You know which actor I'm talking about, right? Toby? Come on now. But yes, he was an interesting character and uh, the people at Cedar Point didn't even recognize him until uh, the people who were operating the ride pointed him out to them. But I recognized him because I just happened to see the latest Predators movie that he was a star of. And he looked like literally the same haircut Everything. I mean, it was really, really cool seeing him in person there. Time to hunt. Time to hunt. And I made sure to make a comment to him that I enjoyed him in the Predators movie rather than the la that 70s show. I'm sure he's heard that 70s show more than enough times. But I'm going to play as a Predator here. And for the record, this is a Capcom CPS2 game. You do need BIOS to run this. The BIOS are called Q Sound Zip. And I'll actually list what they are in the description for this video, but you can uh, download my course set, use the Master BIOS module, copy Q Sound Zip right into the system Libreno folder, and uh, you'll be able to pretty much run this game. And another thing to note, I am running this via MAME2003. Any ROM set that you're trying to run for this game, try to run it on MAME 2003, then try to run it on Final Burn Alpha 2012. I would do that with many of the games you have, because you have a nice 50-50 chance of getting it to work on either MAME 2003 and or Final Burn Alpha 2012. Them are my two primary arcade cores. A really, really awesome game here, and it would have been amazing to be able to get past the licensing obstacle and have this on PS4, but it will likely never happen. If it does, I'll be thoroughly surprised. And I can almost guarantee, I mean, very, very recently, Angry Video Game Nerd played this game in his videos. 
I can almost guarantee he was playing it on an NES Classic, but the video was just edited to pretty much uh, dominate out the fact that he was running it on a Mini, but it is very, very clear that he was definitely running it off a Mini. <laughs> a really, really awesome game. Definitely check out Aliens vs. Predator, and remember, you are going to need the Q Sound BIOS, without a doubt. And other games that are CPS2 games are games such as the two Dungeons and Dragons game, so keep that in mind. And the nice thing is if you're running Capcom CPS3 games, such as Street Fighter Alpha 3 and such, you don't need the BIOS at all. They simply just run, and I recommend running them all via Final Burn Alpha 2012. Here we're going to move on to another Aliens game. I mean, we're going to stick with this Aliens gimmick here for one more game here. And this is actually, ironically, one of the very first games I ever showed in my YouTube videos for the original NES Classic. Really, really cool arcade game here. One of the great Konami games. And we have quite a few more to cover today. And we're about to be in action here. I am running 124 games in my main user interface, as I mentioned within the last couple videos. They have been working out fine for me, no issues whatsoever. And this is also another great two-player game. Maybe we need to get a little bit of two-player action going on here, so I'm going to go into uh, input this game. And I'm going to find coin for player two. I'm going to make it the select button, which I have for player one. Then I'm going to program player two real quick. Left, right, up, down. Give him a couple buttons here. And then I'll make it start. And uh, just to add a little bit of variety here, I'm going to make him actually move the opposite direction with me. Okay, let's get the show on the road here. Look at that! Two player action! Really, really awesome. I'm taking it. <laughs> and anytime I do any kind of two player game, such as a horizontal or vertical shooter, I would definitely reverse the controls so they move like this. It works out so much better. But it's an incredibly awesome gimmick doing two players by yourself if you don't have a friend handy. And it'll also make the bosses a lot easier to take out. And I can reverse the controls here too if I want to. I can do this. I'll go to player two right and reverse those real quick. And then I have this kind of action going on. Really, really cool. Really, really funny two-player mode, for sure. Twice the firepower, the boss goes out twice as fast. Unless you're playing a game where they stack energy on the enemy when you have more than one player. And there we go. Then we get a really, really cool uh, shooting stage where you're on the vehicle. Many, many games have this type of thing. Well, we're going to move on to some more games here. Definitely check out the multi-controls with two to four players. And there are some eight-player games that I'm going to try to get going as well. And I'm going to do a little tutorial and or release an HMOD for it. But we're still in the arcade category here, so we're going to do a few more arcade games. We'll do Battletoads, which is an incredibly awesome and ultra-violent game here. Obviously not as vi not violent like 
Should I say the Nintendo version is not violent like this one. This is far more violent than the Nintendo version. This is brutally violent as you will see. And I actually did have the privilege of running into this game in the arcade. Should I say a movie theater arcade because it is hard to even find an arcade nowadays unless you are at a place such as Cedar Point and or Dave and Buster's. So we're checking out Battletoads here. Might need to do a little bit of two-player action on this one as well. And look who made the game, the incredibly awesome company, Rare. And if you do have the Xbox One and you get the Rare Replay Collection, guess what? This game is in the collection. Stop in time! Hey look, we got two-player action going on here. Now I'm going to reverse the controls again, just like I did in the other one. We're going to, I believe it's player three right now, so I'm going to reverse the controls here. Down won't be up. Up will be down. Okay, I did the wrong one. Let's try it with player two. And there we go. More coverage. <laughs> yes, I'm definitely going to be playing many, many arcade games using that little two-player to four-player gimmick. It's really awesome. Never ever gets old. It's especially cool if you're playing a two-player game where you can, te you can basically team up on enemies. I mean, I'm going to have to get this going for games such as River City Ransom on Nintendo as well, because it should definitely work out incredibly awesome if we run it that way. But you cannot go wrong with a rare game. I'm going to showcase a couple more rare games in this first poor stream against the video. Okay, that's Battletoads playing two-player on main 2003 stream. Really, really awesome stuff. And of course, we have a couple more arcade games to go before I get to a few other systems. We're going to do another ultra-violent side-scrolling horror game. We're going to check out this great game called Night Slashers. And I am running the Japanese version right now because the blood is red. And I'm going to give you a perfect example of why the blood should be red because you'll see what I mean after I play my next game. If you're going to play a game with blood, please be red blood. Mortal Kombat certainly wouldn't be fun if it was all green blood. But the next game I play after this is going to give you a perfect example of what I mean by green blood versus red blood. Take a guess at which game I'm going to play next and uh, let's see if you guys figure it out. But right now we're playing one of the most violent arcade games and this is also on MAME 2003. And again I'm running the Japanese version of it. And I might as well do uh, a little bit of two player action here as well. So we'll do a uh, two player, uh, I'll make it reverse again. Okay, let's check this out. Awesome, awesome. Red blood! This is another game that you're not going to want to try to run on May 2010 or 2014 because it'll be far too slow, but it runs 
near perfectly on May 2003 Extreme. Getting a two player gimmick is so fun to play. Definitely check it out. But this is Night Slasher. It's a really, really cool game. And make sure you play the Japanese version because you're going to have green blood if you play the USA version. And there are just simply so many incredibly awesome ultra-violent, horror-themed arcade games, so, I mean, a vast majority of part one is gonna be a lot of arcade games. We're gonna do this other great one called Wild Fang, a.k.a. Tecmo Knight. Another fun, ultra-violent side-scrolling video game. This one, I'm just gonna go with the flow and let it play one player. But you see how incredibly easy it is to go with the R2 button and program the controls 2 player 2, 3, 4, and so on. But I'm likely going to do an H mod so you can just install it to have these games auto play on your Super Nintendo controller and or Wii controller, etc. But we're playing out Wild Fang, aka Tecmo Knight right now. And here we go. The typical BIOS check screen. Normally if you're in an arcade and you plug the machine in, you would get this on boot up. But nice and violent, as you'll see. Look at that, dismemberment! <laughs> very, very cool game. They need this kind of action in Golden Axe for sure. And for the record, Tecmo went on to make Rygar and Ninja Gaiden. And we know how ultraviolet Ninja Gaiden is. I'm talking the Xbox Ninja Gaiden, of course. And here's the other cool thing, check this out. Don't always push the select button and insert your coins. Watch what happens here when I start the game and I do not push any buttons. I'm going to let the attract mode play for a moment here. Just watch. Just let the attract mode play and you might see some incredibly cool cinemas and or mini animations. Just check it out. You'll see it here in a moment. Right there. Look at this. Violence. Violence and more violence. But we're going to move on to some more games here. As mentioned, I'm a big horror movie fan, and I, I literally just check out each and every horror movie I can. And if you do have friends, family members, and such who aren't into horror movies, start them out with something such as Tucker and Dale vs. Evil, or Cabin in the Woods. Something that's more of a dark comedy that's more tolerable to the person who is more easily scared. And I've watched many of the more recent horror movies because I catch up on all of them. I've watched... The latest movie called Happy Death Day, which is a great horror movie, very, very similar to Groundhog Day. I watched the one called You Wish, which had some incredibly bad reviews, but it's basically a, a retelling of the Edgar Allan Poe, uh, Monkey's Paw. Really, really cool movie, though. Here we're going to check out Splatterhouse 3 for Mega Drive. And another horror movie I just watched was really, really interesting called Truth or Dare. It also didn't have great reviews, but I had fun with the movie. Where essentially they are given a, a choice of doing a truth or dare, and if they do not, if they lie on the truth, or they do not complete the dare, they die a horrible death on the spot. It wasn't a bad movie, it was very, very interesting, and it actually has a close approximation to certain characters that you see in the Star Trek Next Generation, as well as in Supernatural. But I'm not going to tell you what characters they are, I'm going to let you see for yourself what I'm talking about. But here we're playing Splatterhouse 3. Remember when I was talking about the games that have green blood? The very, very first Splatterhouse, no matter what system you played on, be it the arcade or TurboGrafx-16, it had green blood. 
my hammer playing Splatterhouse 3. And I do have the PS3 reboot of Splatterhouse as well, which is awesome. Green Blood, yes! Last time Green Blood was cool, or should I say Green Slime, was watching that classic 1980s TV series called Can't Do That on Television, which just had Alanis Morissette on it. And anytime people would say, I don't know, Green Slime would be poured from the roof onto them from a bucket. But why couldn't they get some red blood going on here? And I believe there might actually be a cheat code to get some red blood going for this game. I need some red blood, this is ridiculous. But it is an incredibly fun game, despite having the green blood. Any game where you can play a pseudo, Jason Voorhees is good in my book. We're gonna move on to Splatterhouse 1. Which also has green blood. I really, really wish they would have had red blood for it. It definitely would have added to the effect. But if you play the, uh, the PS3 version, there is some incredibly awesome red blood scores of it. So I'm going to the arcade version of Splatterhouse real quick. And I pass right by it. I apparently do not have it in my list here. So what I'm going to do is just load any other game and or Red Shark. I'll just load Missile Command here. Because you can load any other game to get into Red Shark. Or you can load Red Shark as an icon from the main user interface. And then I'm simply going to load the game via the dummy folder method since I conveniently forgot to put it in my main user interface. So once I'm loaded into Missile Command, I'll get into Spider House via the dummy folder method. And we should be here in a second. Okay, welcome to the dummy folder. I'm going to go to Retro Options now. Here we go. Low content, stock directory, dummy, main 2003, which is my main directory. And since I've been playing uh, main games for a good 20 plus years, I'm very, very familiar with the ROM set names. So most of them I could find pretty fast. A lot of them are self-explanatory, like this is simply just splatter zip, but some of the other ones are a little bit trickier to know what they are, especially if they're alphabetized without vowels in between. They, they could be tricky. But I'm running this via main 2003 Extreme as well. And you'll see the green blood, of course. You think the arcade version would have had red blood, but no. And we should be in action here in a moment. More green blood, yes! I don't know, 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 I don't know. Okay, yeah, can't do it on television really does hold up well after all this time. Remember them uh, locker jokes they had and such? And guess what, I don't, oh there we go. I didn't think I had my jump button mapped. You got characters on the ground and pools of red blood, but when I hit it, oh look, I got some red blood there. Look at that, ironic. I can apparently kick bats and shoot whatever the bats and make them turn into red blood. But anything that remotely resembles a human being or a zombie has green blood. Let's check it out again and see what I mean. Red blood, red blood, red blood, more red blood. Oh no, green blood because they're a little bit too human-like apparently. But we're going to move on to just a couple more games here. Come on, look, there's just pools of red blood everywhere, yet they couldn't make the zombies spew out red blood. Come on now. We're going to do one more game, and this is actually going to surprise you guys and gals. There are two things that are quite surprising about this game. One is that I've never played this game before. I've owned this game, and it is just sat there collecting dust, but I've never actually played it. 
Nightmare on Elm Street. Secondly, even though this has the horrendous LGN logo, it was not made by LGN. It was actually made by Rare, the same company that made the Battletoads games that I showed you earlier. And Rare really is an excellent company. This is not an all bad game. If you have the ability to use a four score adapter, you can play this game four players. I mean, I really don't care how bad a game is. I think the gimmick of playing a game four players is awesome. But you can definitely tell Rare's behind this. It has the signature music, sound effects, and graphic style that you'd expect. A little bit like Time Lord. But yes, this would definitely be fun to play four players. And I died just like that. I need three more players! I definitely gotta get the four player action going on here. Oh, I'm feeling like Angry Video Game there when he played this video game. Wow. Awful, awful, awful. Let's try this one more time. This music is not that bad. It's actually pretty interesting music. It's one of those games where it's probably easier to just avoid the enemies rather than try to attack each and every one of them. Unless you get bombarded by them and have no choice. But yes, essentially you have to collect all the bones and then throw them into the furnace, I believe at the high school, and then you beat the game. But yes, hope you enjoyed the video.